Hello and welcome. This is Rufal Monger, my friends. We have even more information now on Fatal Fury City of the Wolves. So the other day we had some trailers drop and showed us some info and some mechanics on the game and we do have a video covering that already. And also earlier we had some people who had hands on playtime with the game giving their thoughts. And also with that, some all new footage of the game and proper gameplay, not like super heavily edited stuff for trailers. So for this other footage that you're seeing here, players like say Justin Wong were invited over to the SNK World Championships to have a bit of a preview of the game. I myself was not invited, but hey, maybe next time. But still, I can glean a lot of info from the new footage that's out there and there's a lot to talk about. From the previous trailers, we already got a really good idea how things work, like say the Rev Excel system, where you can cancel specials into other specials. But now with proper gameplay, we can see meters and all that, and we can see how things properly work in proper fashion. So in this video, I'm gonna be discussing a lot of just the core gameplay mechanics of Fatal Fury, City of the Wolves. As well as some other little interesting things I've noticed, and also a few Easter eggs, as those backgrounds, uh, there's some things in there. But the big thing to talk about here is the rev system as it kind of gauges everything, right? And with that, we have the rev meter. So if we take a look here at the bottom corners, we can see where the rev meter lies. So the two yellow bars, that's super meters. It works basically how you would expect, right? Uh, every super, as far as I can tell, has a level one and a level two version and level two version, obviously fancier graphics, more damage, all that stuff. That's the easy part. The rev meter, if you have a look here at the bottom right, just slightly enhanced, right, is what makes everything in this game go, though. Think of it like a bizarro version of the drive gauge in Street Fighter VI. It starts at zero, and many actions in the game build it up. Some can be bad, like blocking builds it up. You don't want that, because when you build it up all the way, that's actually kind of bad news. Once you build it up all the way, you're now overheated and you're locked out of the system. So that means you cannot do any more fancy things. Like here, Rock goes for EX Elbow, and that's enough to put him into the overheat state. So he's maxed out. So all the cool system mechanics, he's locked out until overheat goes away. Once again here, just about everything you do builds the gauge in some way. So let's get an example out of Preacha here. So she's gonna go for an EX, uh, effectively, I'll just call it Jaguar Kick, right? Gets in, you can see the nice glow revving up. We're getting close. And then after it connects, then we go for Rev Excel Cancel. You can see the blue sparks, and that will build up even more Rev Gauge. So basically, just like the drive system in Street Fighter VI, all the cool things you can do in the game are tied to the Rev Up mechanic. So as long as you have room to Rev Up, you can go as crazy as you want. All sorts of neat, interesting mechanics, EX move, Rev Excel, Special Cancel, and the Special Cancel. But as soon as you go a little too crazy, you overheat and then, well, you don't get to play the cool stuff anymore. Basically, it's just going to be about meter management, just like the drive system. While you're at neutral, it'll slowly decrease. If you're hitting the enemy successfully, it'll also decrease or just, you know, doing basic non EX versions of your special moves. It'll increase if you block or do EX moves or do fancy rev engine mechanics like the Rev Excel, where you can cancel and the cancel and the cancel. And just like say the drive gauge, there's gonna be a lot of valid scenarios where you're almost certainly gonna be able to like, just go, okay, I'm gonna go into overheat because I want the damage now, but also tied the defensive mechanics like the Rev Guard, which is effectively the push block system of the game. So it's gonna be a really good push and pull in the same way that the drive system is. I have to assume it's inspired by the drive system because they are very similar in a lot of ways, but it's a good mechanic. So, hey, it works. One thing to mention, just like going into a, you know, burnout with the drive system, there is one marked penalty for going into overheat. Going back to our previous footage here, there is the little blue bars underneath the player's main health. That is your defense gauge. And normally it doesn't really do anything, but once you're in overheat and you can see by like the red glow around your character, once you start blocking moves, then the defense meter will start going down. And if it goes down all the way, you will be left in a guard broken state. At which point the enemy can do whatever they want to you. So you really got to avoid it. So overheat is definitely really bad in that way. Now let's talk the SPG mechanic. You may notice here, this is another thing that is up by the player's names. 
And you may also notice that it can be in multiple places of the health bar here. So Rock has it in the middle, Tzok has it at the end, you can also have it at the beginning. What exactly is this? Obviously, as it has a special glowing effect, it seems like a big deal, right? So this is your selective potential gear. Uh, this is similar to the classic mechanic of Goro, of what we would call the top in. So basically, when you pick your character, you would choose then where your top in is, you know, at the beginning of your health bar, or the middle, or the end. Uh, it is called SPG this time around, but it's effectively the same difference. And wherever you put it on your health bar, once you're actively in it, the top end state or the SPG state, you're basically the peak of what your character can be. For one, you unlock new moves. The Rev Blow, where your character turns green, that is only possible once you're in your SPG state, wherever your health bar may be. And as you can see from the trailers, you can cancel into it from your special moves, making it very valuable for combos. There are air and ground versions. So combo ability, not an issue. That's really handy. And also, it's a dedicated defensive move. As you can see here, it has multiple hits of armor. So Tzok is going through two of Terry's hits and then still attacking and hitting him on the other side of things. So combo potential and defensive potential. And once again, this move, the Rev Blow, is only available once you're in the SPG part of your health bar. So once you're out of it, or you're not in it yet, you do not have access to this move, which is very, very valuable. Also, in another little bit of a nod to Street Fighter VI, if you Rev Blow someone else's Rev Blow, then <laughs> you get that like super dramatic slowdown, right? And uh, second one hits is the one that wins. So just it granting the rev blow, which is a super versatile move, right? That makes SPG state worth it as it is, but there's a lot more going on than just that. Another very marked benefit is you do just a little bit more damage and things that would increase your rev gauge meter, like say EX moves or doing rev excel cancels, it'll take just a little bit less. So it'll take you longer to go into the overheat state. So your general offensive potential just kind of all around is going to be much better while you're in the SPG state. There is defensive benefit as well, though, because your health will slowly regenerate only in the piece of your health bar that is SPG OK. So at the top of the bar, middle bar, whatever you may choose, end of the bar as well. This is the most important part for offense and defense. This is where you're going to get most of your life, and this is where you're going to get most of your offense. Also, as mentioned earlier in the video, you have all sorts of super moves that use your yellow bars at the bottom, level one, level two. There is also a secret super that you can only do while you're in the SPG state. So you need to be in that part of your health bar and have two meters. We don't have any footage of them other than the bit of the trailer, the part where Rock is doing the power geyser. That is his SPG state only level two super. So yeah, being in the mode is super important for so many reasons. Obviously gonna be a lot of strategic play and where to put it, beginning, middle, or end of your health bar. If you have the beginning, you have explosive offensive potential at the start of the round, but you also won't have two meters at the start of the fight, right? So your super move, maybe you won't have it right out of the gate. Put it towards the end of your life, you don't have as much offensive potential at the start of the round, but your comeback potential becomes all the deadlier, right? So we'll wait and see how the meta shifts around that, I guess. So one of the biggest things that's going to be back here in City of the Wolves, I mentioned quite a few things like, oh, hey, a little bit like Street Fighter 6 or whatever. This is as furthest from Street Fighter as you can get. So the original Garo Mark of the Wolves faint system does return in this game. The faint system, well, it's kind of exactly what it sounds like, right? Where you faint a move and you can use this for pressure. You can go into a normal faint cancel and then go for more normals, faint cancel, and like you can continue pressure this way. Like take a given move, we'll use Burn Knuckle here for Terry, for example, right? And what a feint is, basically it'll do the start of the move, but then it will not do the rest of the move, right? Uh, so on a base level, it can just be there to fake you out, like for a read or something like that. But say for someone like Terry, you can use it to create combos that otherwise would not exist. Like close heavy into feint cancel into another close heavy is an actual combo. Uh, normally it would not combo, right? Uh, you couldn't link into, into itself, but since the faint cancel goes quicker than your actual normal recovery of the move, it allows you to create combos in situations you never otherwise would get the combo. 
So in terms of pressure, in terms of combo ability, just in terms of general offense, it's super strong. Like right here, what Rock is doing, he's doing faint canceled Rapukins, like the fireball. It's not actually following through, but then he's hitting different buttons. So it's an incredibly strong mechanic. Like this is the reason why Rev Guard, the push block mechanic exists to get people off you that are constantly doing attacks into feints into attacks into feints into attacks into a feint, right? Because it'd be deadly to stick a button out, but at least Rev Guard, the push block can get him out and give you a little bit of breathing room to work with. So on top of feints, just working good as feints, like they, as they should, they can trick people especially know if they're looking to like a uh, reaction check, super go through a fireball or something. But the ability to create all sorts of offense is going to be truly fantastic. Expect the faint system to create not only just wild pressure, but also some really innovative and fun combos as well, combined with a lot of the other mechanics that we have, like the Rev Excel and also the Rev Blow. This was a big deal back in the days of Garou, the original game. And I am very confident it will be a big deal here as well. Another thing we know for sure now that is back is just defense. I pretty much guessed as much from the original trailer, but we now we know. And I just want to talk about it for those that may not know what it's about. Uh, I guess you could say it's somewhat analogous to the Street Fighter 3 parry, although not exactly one. It's back, not forward. So say you mess up and enter a just defense too quick you'll still block, right? So it's inherently a safer option than a parry is. On top of obviously just defending, what does it give you? You will recover faster than a normal basic block. You will also get just a smidge, a very small amount of health back. And if your rev gauge is up at all, it'll also lower your rev gauge just a little bit. So if you're in the position to be able to just defend, it's always in your benefit to do so. This also lets you defend yourself while you're airborne. So unlike say Street Fighter, you do have an option to block in the air. Now it has to be a just defense, therefore it has to be timing based. You can't just hold back, right? But if you're on the ball, you can defend yourself while airborne and potentially punish people for trying to get an anti-air on you or say some sort of uppercut or reversal or something like that. Now to note as well, this has to be off a full jump. So this being, you know, the SNK license, SNK style of game, it has short hops and all that kind of stuff. So you cannot just defend while short hopping. It has to be a full proper jump. So therefore, empty jump into potentially baiting a just defense is a real play. If you short you can every jump in, they can use your reaction and timing against you. So another layer of defense in the game. So mechanically, lots of things going on. We already mentioned in the other video, some of the other mechanics going in depth in like Rev Excel, which is the really cool special cancels and the special cancels that leave like the blue silhouette outlines and also the break mechanic, which is returning. That is mentioned in the other video. If you wanna check that out, I'll have a link for you in the video description. But let's talk some of those Easter eggs I've noticed here. Like, hey, look at that sign. It says Bar Street Stars. Where do I remember that from? Oh, that's right. It's from the Art of Fighting Max Bar stage. Art of Fighting, if you're unaware, also takes place in Southtown. In the nebulous SNK timeline, it's well before the Fatal Fury games. But yeah, it's all still there. So this is Max Bar. Little bit of a renovation since the days of Art of Fighting, I guess, but it's totally there. And also, just me talking, right? Gives a good chance for either Robert or Rio to be a playable character, in my opinion. Also, that lady in the purple... I can't prove it, but I'm pretty sure that's King. She is another Art of Fighting slash Southtown stalwart after all. And also for the other stage that we've seen, it looks like we have someone returning from Fatal Fury 1. And that would be the Dream Amusement Park, otherwise known as SNK Land. You may notice the carousel, the big Ferris wheel in the back, the big old boat. And when we go back to the more modern reinterpretation of the stage, we got a big old boat. We got a carousel. Little hard to see because the building is obstructing it, but we also have the Ferris wheel in the background. Heck, even in the far background, you can see the mountains sort of peeking out, right? That's very much there in the original too, the mountain in the far background. So uh, yeah, I'm very sure this is a SNK game land as it were returning. And that's really cool. Keep the references alive. Keep the old stuff alive. It works out. I like it. And just a few other things to mention that don't bear their own little section here. SNK was the last holdout, but they have finally caved in. So throws work like Street Fighter now. So 
lights together, light punch, light kick, and it's exactly like Street Fighter. Go for an animation, you whiff or not, whatever, right? Uh, throw whiffs are a thing. There is no more one frame proximity throws. So I think uh, King of Fighters 15 will go down as the last game to do it. Makes sense. I'm not against it. Just, you know, end of an error, I guess, is really all I can say. The fighting game old man way of doing throws is now finally done. So besides that, not even necessarily gameplay, but I love like the aesthetic of the game. You know, uh, modern SNK ever since, you know, post King of Fighters 13, there's always been criticisms lobbied at SNK over graphics one way or another. And you know, it's always gotten kind of old, but there's no denying this game. This game looks sharp as hell. There's a super strong stylistic vibe. Like they're using the same Terry and rock models from KOF 15. And the fact that they look so different, even though it's the same model is very telling to the profound art style of this game. When you can't necessarily put forward the same budget as you know, a Capcom or a Namco for Street Fighter Tekken, you got to compete in other ways. And for visual fidelity, they figured it out. The presentation just looks satisfying for what I can say. Like there are a lot of glass break effects. If you hit say on a counter hit, uh, every hit looks pronounced. The hit sparks look good. The feel looks good. Hit stop on moves feels good. Just everything looks and feels good. And I believe Kane is like soft confirmed and considering Kane and his like purpley glowy effects and all that in this engine, I think look really good and really sharp. Basically everything looks good. I'm really excited for the game. I'm happy that the game's keeping a lot of the core old Garou mechanics because it's considered a harder game, right? Like a modern audience, uh, you would think maybe wouldn't be quote unquote ready or whatever games getting toned down over the years. This is definitely not going to be a toned down game. Break canceling, faint canceling, all that kind of stuff. It, this is uh, going to be a game for the big boys for sure. So uh, as a mechanic dense game, uh, you know, me as a fighting game nerd, <laughs> really looking forward to it. What can I say? That all said though, that's it for the video. So in the future, when there is more news, be it trailers, gameplay, whatever, don't worry, I'll have you covered here on the channel for more City of the Wolves coverage. But other than that, I guess we're at the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well and go out and play some Fatal Fury. Oh, yeah.